My name is Achim Schloffel from Innerspace Explorers and I would like to introduce you today to the new ISE Oxygen Rebreather program and um, I would like to explain you a little bit why we choose to have this program in Innerspace Explorers and a little bit of the benefits of using one of these machines. Actually, after World War II when recreational diving became a public sport, so to speak, um, people had a choice. 50% of them could go towards the Hans Haas type of diving, which meant oxygen rebreathers, while the others went to the Gusteau way of diving, which was the so-called aqualung, which we know today as scuba gear. Um, over the years, the scuba gear was further developed and today is the standard in recreational diving, whilst the oxygen rebreathers basically disappeared. Uh, one of the reasons is that there is a certain uh, limitation in depth, and on the other hand, there have been a couple of really bad accidents as in these early days, people didn't know about the dangers of using pure oxygen. All of this is obviously history, today we know, and um, unfortunately, these units have been disappeared. They are only used by, um, by militaries, for scientific divers, for special purposes. And, um, I've been using oxygen rebreathers personally for a very long time because I tend to dive from kayaks to do photo work, to work with cameras and to go to remote dive sites. And diving from a kayak with classical scuba gear is hard because it's heavy, it's bulky and it creates all kinds of issues. Whilst the small oxygen rebreather, as you can see it here, is a really handy unit that gives you a lot of bottom time with a very small tank and um, by just taking another 1.5 liter tank gives you another three hours of bottom time. So what are the type of divers that we are aiming for when we develop the program? I personally thought a lot about female divers because when I talk to women all over the world that are into recreational diving then I hear a lot the same story, which is I love to dive, but I don't want to go deep. If I go deep, um, there's no life that I'm interested in. So I want to stay shallow, enjoy fish and reef life. And I have an issue with the weight of the scuba gear. So that's the perfect unit for this type of divers. It's lightweight. It is good to be dived in the 10 meter range and um, Actually, you become a fish amongst fish, which means you get closer to marine life than you could ever do with conventional scuba. Um, another point is elderly people that are fit to dive, but again, don't want uh, to deal with heavy scuba gear. Perfect unit. And of course, for photographers, for video filmers, and for people who simply want to enjoy nature. So, this one's ready to dive. Um, and I would like to show you how we prepare it. So let's prepare another unit um, step by step and I'll show you how easy it is. Okay, now let's see how we assemble it and uh, see how easy it is to, to get this thing ready to dive. And the first thing we use is the Kodura cover that um, is housing basically all the rebreather parts and protects them. The next thing we need um, as a counterweight for um, some of the heavier parts is a little piece of lead that goes in here before we continue with the counter lung itself. Counter lung itself, here we have it, is the heart of the rebreather, so to speak. And um, now we fill that in there. So as you realize, there's no screws or, or, um, or big hardware parts. It's all very simple, very intuitive, and um, therefore very lightweight easy to assemble. So now you see the counter lung is in there, straps go through here and 
then we're basically done. So what we need inside the counter lung is something we call a drool pad. And um, that's just this little piece here that collects moisture in the counter lung and prevents this moisture from going into the lime canister. So it's easily installed in here and we are already ready to put the lime canister in. That comes here, it's already filled, nice piece. And the special thing about this rebreather is that the lime canister is inside the counter lung. So it's in there, we actually put the ceiling in place. Again, no tools needed. And we're ready with that. So now we need the cover for this. It goes on here, make sure everything's nice and clean. One center screw, screw it down and we're ready. So now as the rebreather basically is assembled, we need to get gas in this, therefore we need a first stage. And this is the first stage with the inlet knob. The inlet is like a regular BCD inflator. So it goes through here, actually here you see the connector, it goes on, there's an SPG and it is installed. All right, next thing we need is the breathing loop. Here's the breathing loop, there's the mouthpiece. Goes through here. Screwed on. And then goes through here. Screw it on and we're ready. So now we can close it. All right, so now we're missing some gas. So we need the tank that goes underneath here wrong one, the tank. It's a 1.5 liter aluminum tank that we put here and attach to the first stage. Just secure it with those straps here. Tank is secured, put the velcro cover on top and our nice little unit is assembled and ready to dive. So the only thing missing now is basically the jacket where I can touch it. <laughs> Not really. The jacket where I can attach it and I'm ready to dive. I'm Jochen and I like this unit because it's very easy to transport this unit to areas which are not accessible by car very easily. Um, it's more easy to transport a unit with about 9 kilos than a regular dive tank with weights and all you need. My name is Piros. Uh, this unit is really excellent. Uh, normally, you, know, you do not need uh, much space to, to carry it. You can have it in your diving gear bag. Uh, additionally, in the dive boat, you do not need, again, uh, so much space as the 
Norbert Scuba area unit. Uh, it is very lightweight, I like this very much, especially when I want to fast get in the water. I'm a keen CCR diver. Mainly I use it for technical diving because for me it creates more safety. But uh, I love it for more reasons, especially for the silence underwater. It's beautiful when you come really close to the fish and, and there's absolutely nothing around you and the buoyancy when you're neutral on a rebreather, you're really flying. And on the oxygen rebreather, it's all of that, but also it's just so much more easier because it weighs nothing. I mean, I go on the water with this. It's a tiny little front-mounted thing with a tiny little tank and that's it and I'm ready to go. So it's easy. It doesn't weigh anything. I hate to use the weight fall, but uh, it makes a difference. It's just really, really nice. I love it. Underwater photographer is really important for me to get close to the aquatic marine life underwater. With the rebreather I can do so because I make no sound at all. I'm totally in stealth mode. With the oxygen rebreather I do not even have a solenoid firing and it's really lightweight. It's really easy to dive. I can even carry it in my hand luggage on the flight. It's only made for shallow diving but in shallow water where you have all the fish and the good colors. The rebreather for me is perfect when I take pictures. Yeah. 